Yep. Uh, first things first, just to uh, to update everybody on uh, a couple of things. You know, Devin Air is uh, remains uh, suspended, and uh, that suspension is indefinite. And uh, we'll certainly uh, announce uh, to you guys uh, the moment that uh, that that his status changes. He's obviously practicing with us and uh, doing every everything else other than participating uh, in in the game and you know further addressing him you know a lot of great kids and young people can make uh, bad decisions uh, does not mean that they're bad kids uh, well college is a time where you know it's sometimes the best lessons are learned uh, in a negative sense you, you rebound from it you learn from it you grow and you take a different approach. Uh, that's for all, all students that come to the University of Arizona. And our players are no different. Uh, just like when they make really good decisions and do things the right way, you know, they also learn the benefits of that. Um, so, you know, we're, we're uh, working with, with Devin Air every day and uh, looking forward to, to his return at some point. Uh, Zeke Naji did not play in our uh, exhibition game against Chico State. And uh, he had really had a great stretch of health. I don't know if, if Zeke missed a single day other than a few days before the game. Uh, he hurt his ankle. Uh, his injury was not significant. Um, and we've uh, worked with him. He practiced with us yesterday. And uh, we fully expect him to play unless he would uh, s sustain a, a setback here today or tomorrow. But uh, we're being smart with him. You know, big picture ahead of us. And uh, certainly Zeke is a really a prominent player, as is Devin Air. And, you know, when we've watched the film of Chico State, you know, our one game that we played here in McHale, you know, we did not play well the other night. And uh, that's why you play an exhibition game, though. You know, we had uh, guys with, no doubt, first game jitters. We have a lot of new faces. When you go into a game like that and, and you have two players that you practice with every day, that have risen to be among your team's best, and then all of a sudden they're not available. That makes everybody feel different, and you know even myself. Uh, additionally, you know we're thrilled to have Jamal Baker with us, and uh, this has nothing to do with him being eligible. But Jamal is the one guy that has missed the most practice, and uh, so although he played against Chico State and, and helped us win the game and did some really good things, um, he, he was nowhere near where I believe he'll be when he's fully healthy and understanding um, what we do, plus the four other players getting used to playing with him, which hasn't happened a lot. I'd say he's out of the 25 plus practices we've had, you know, he's been involved in about half of them. But you know, he's practicing now and he's cleared playing the game the other day. Um, you know, I, I, hopefully he'll continue to improve uh, both physically and, and become more comfortable. I'm sure he didn't feel you know, completely comfortable for a lot of reasons the other day. But we learned a lot from Chico State. Um, like we watched the film, had a practice yesterday, and uh, we're really looking forward to, you know, for the first time playing a game that counts against NAU on Wednesday. It's been a long time uh, since we played a game of meaning towards the record, and uh, I think everybody from our players, coaches, managers, we're, we're excited to, uh, to start. It's been a few years since you've played one of those high-profile, like neutral site games or anything. Uh, would you prefer staying with the, this format where you play a few games at home before doing that, or uh, did you like that Hawaii game or one of those one-off type things? Well, I mean, we've um, now we've actually played quite a few of the of the uh, those types of events. First of all, and then you know the neutral. The neutral game I think that you're talking about is Texas A&M because we played them in Houston and then we returned the game to Phoenix. I'm more meaning like to start the season, like a few years ago when you started over in Hawaii. There's, you know, yeah. there's the championship classic going on tomorrow. You've got um, the China game and things like that. Do you have a preference for your opener? I mean, the more games that we can play here in McHale, the better, uh, and then home and away. But I think to start out the season, it's always nice to be able to play uh, – as evidenced by Chico State, you know, it's uh, you think guys are, you know, in midseason form. They're not. You know, this is the first time playing uh, in front of a big crowd at home. A lot of our players, this is the first time playing a game like that in an Arizona uniform. And, uh, you know, that sense of comfort to have 
the great fan base that we have and the magic of Mikhail on our side, uh, you know, we want to use that to our advantage. But uh, as you know, looking at our schedule, I mean, we, we play quite a few games away from home. I would say more than a number of teams that are compared to us. I mean, uh, play St. John's where the Golden State Warriors are going to play their season this year in San Francisco. You know, we're at, we're at Baylor. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're playing in the uh, wooden tradition. So we're going to have our fair share of away games and, new, and neutral games. And, uh, but we want to take advantage of day one, game one here against NAU. How is the three-point line, expansion of the three-point line, expanded how you coach taking threes? You know, I, I really don't know yet. Um, you know, I, I've coached in the FIBA basketball a uh, number of years. You know, I, I looked at the distance of the uh, that line, which is now today's college three-point distance, as significant. You know, it really affects those that occasionally shoot a three-point shot. You know, I think the really pure shooters in our game, I don't know if the, the effect will be as, as strong as maybe – the occasional, keep you honest, three-point shooter. But you know, we're approaching things the same way. Uh, we did a really poor job of defending the three-point shot the other day against Chico State. We knew going into the game that they shoot a lot of threes. And when you attempt a lot of threes, you, know, you can have one of those nights. For them to make 10 three-point shots against our defense was uh, very disappointing. It's, I would say, a point of emphasis for us as we move forward. You cannot allow teams to take three-point shots, 25 and make 10, shoot 40% in the game. It's, it's really hard to win that game when a team does that to you. So, uh, you know, for us, yesterday was about that, you know, making sure that, you know, every shot is challenged and that we can take it away and uh, recognizing the, the power of, of that line. Are you going to start the D tomorrow or what's the plan for him? We, we don't know yet just because although he practiced yesterday, he's got to be able to string together a couple of days. He has to feel completely comfortable. And uh, and I'm confident that he will, but we're just not there yet. I, I do think that there's a real chance that he will start. If if he wasn't injured, he would have started in our last game. He's he's uh, no question a starter. You were talking about Ira and he played well the other day. Does, that, does his play change anything in that dynamic? You know, you know, Ira did some really good things in that game. Uh, anytime a player can get 14 rebounds uh, in, a, in a game like that, 10 defensive rebounds, uh, you know, he was very meaningful towards uh, our win and also thought he slowed down on offense and had a couple good shots, made a few. Even the ones that he missed, you know, a big part of what we're trying to do with him is, you know, he has the ability to run around and play hard and give great effort. That can work against you sometimes when you have the, the basketball in your hands as an offensive player. So it's about being that type of player, but knowing that you know, decision making and when to drive, when to shoot, slowing down, uh, that, that's more about, OK, now I'm going to be a scorer. He did, that, he did that well the other day. But you know, he's a junior now. Uh, we expect more from him. I know he expects more from himself. And I said this a year ago, you know, Ira Lee is, is one of our team's hardest workers. I think he's more mature. He's been through a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really, really counting on him. So in general, other than uh, Devin Aaron and then the guys who've been a little limited lately, do you feel in general uh, ready at this, at this point, as, you know, kind of to what your expectations were entering the first game? You know, I do. We, we don't have an experienced team. You know, I, I look at NAU, they return all five starters. I think there's something to be said about that. You know, we faced that against Chico State. You know, I believe Chico State returned four of their five starters. And even a couple of their guys, you know, their big guy was out a year ago with a torn ACL, but he returned and he was experienced. And you, you kind of feel that. Guys that have been in games before, no matter how talented we are or players are as first-timers, young freshmen, you know, there's an advantage of being an experienced, seasoned player, especially if you're talented. So, uh, you know, one of the things that we have right now is a lot of new faces. And you know, every time that we do something, we get a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable. And right now, it's, it's now the next phase, which is games. Being ready for games, learning how it feels to play in a game, and, and adjusting. You know, in practice, everybody's playing. You know, in games, you get guys that are on the court. You have guys that are out, you know, subbing for each other. So there's a completely different feel to that. The St. Mary's scrimmage helped us because we, we got a really good team and we learned a lot about ourselves. I really believe Chico State, 
the combination of both, uh, we learned a lot more about ourselves. I don't think that we performed well in that game, and I'm hoping and we'll need to play better here on Wednesday when we play NAU. Anything you do and you've been looking at NAU? Uh, you played them a lot over the years, but not last year, so I didn't know like what you've seen them this year, anything jump or what you, you know, maybe yeah. what you and Murph talked about or whatever, what, what kind of jumps out of you? Their experience, you know, they return uh, all five starters. You know, I think about 75% of their scoring returns. You know, they have a guy on their team, number 21, Avdolovic, and uh, I believe that's how you Avdol 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 Avdolovic. Yeah, Avdolovic. I'm sorry. But he's a really, really good shooter. Uh, you know, when you shoot, and I've got it right here in front of me, 73 made threes a year ago on 148 attempts in 30 games. You know, his percentage from the three-point line was 49%. That's top five in the country. Uh, Got to know where number 21 is at all times. And based on our performance, you know, in our last game out, you know, you give a guy like that five, six good looks, you know, he could have a big game and change the game and really, really uh, spur NAU on to – uh, some good moments, so we're we're aware of him, and uh, and obviously uh, respect not only him, but we respect the firepower of their team. They can score, they can shoot, they have experience, and uh, we're in our season opener. There's still a lot of unknown. You guys put out that Dylan won the gold jersey. What's he been showing you lately? Anything different he's been showing you lately? Maybe even in practice that we haven't seen. Yeah, Dylan uh, had a good week of practice last week. It says a lot about him. You know, he uh, he turned it on. I, I think, you know, there's a very highly competitive environment going on in what we do. I, I really believe that as long as that stays solid, we'll eventually be a really good team uh, because it, it happens on a daily basis. But, you know, you have roles that still need to be sorted out. We don't have an ironclad five that everybody right now knows is going to start. And, it all depends on how much these other guys are going to play. That, that's really not how our team is. We have nine players, and you know, there's not a big difference between a number of them. Uh, we have a couple guys that have certainly risen among the others, but competition is big, and you know, doing it every day prepares you for the game. And uh, you know, Dylan is one of our team's best perimeter players. He's one of our most experienced players, and he did a really good job the other night playing heavy minutes and having zero turnovers. You know, that's something we've tried to talk to him about. You know, cutting down and eliminating negative plays. You know, just um, not not matching a made three or a couple made threes or a couple good plays with a turnover that, that hurts us. And uh, that's what experience starts to do for a player. And we're hoping that in his case, you look at his overall game, that, you know, he's more efficient. And uh, but. Um, he did a good job in a lot of areas the other night and certainly had a good week of practice. With the expectations being so high for Nico, what will a good performance look like in your eyes for him? You know, Nico just has to focus on being a winning player, being himself. He's very good. Uh, we're counting on him. He works hard every day. Uh, he's incredibly coachable. Uh, he's eager to learn, eager to learn from his mistakes. Uh, he had five turnovers the other night, you know, and looking at each of those turnovers and what is it that I could have done differently? You know, how do I learn from that experience and take better care of the ball? Uh, you know, defensively, learning how to play in, in today's game in college. It's faster. It's different than high school. So, But he's on the right track, and uh, he's going to do a lot of good things. Were you planning to uh, name captains this year? I mean, I don't know if I missed that, but you did last year with Yep, last year we named captains. I think it was the first time that I've ever named captains. Um, I don't really believe in it. You know, uh, college basketball is uh, is the best player's game. You know, it's your best players are inherently your team's leaders. Sometimes that might be a sophomore. Derek Williams was a sophomore. For me to say he wasn't the leader of, of his final team, well, why, why would I say that? Because he's only a sophomore. He was unquestionably, on a daily basis in the biggest games, our leader. Um, sometimes you can anoint somebody a captain and because of their experience. And you know what? They're just not wired for it. So, you know, right now, a lot like our starting lineup and maybe our inexperience, uh, we, we're just, I think our leadership is evolving. You know, there's certain guys that do it every day. 
but I'd rather have them do it through performance and uh, really being who they're supposed to be than, uh, than telling everyone who the captain is before the year begins because right now I don't know if I could really tell you. You know, you have Chase, who's one of our oldest players who was last year, and he's one of our team's leaders, no doubt about it, but he can't do it alone. Last year was Justin. How's he been on your coaching staff? Good. You know, Justin is uh, he's a real gift um, for all of our players. And it's really hard to make the transition from playing to coaching, especially in the same program. But he's just one of those rare guys that uh, his maturity stands out. But I think if you talk to Nico and some of our guards, they would tell you that he's been uh, really instrumental in their development. He's somebody that they can use as a sounding board because – you think about it, not only was he here last year playing, but he also transitioned here last year. So he knows what they're going through, playing November games and you know maybe playing at Arizona for the first time. So, uh, But he's, he's uh, really a tremendous kid. You know, he's, right now he's got his grad degree because he came here as a grad transfer. So he's got his undergraduate degree. He also earned his graduate degree. He's actually uh, going to be a doctor in some level here one day. Not a medical doctor, but that's his doctorate. That's what he's trying to get right now. So it kind of tells you where he's at. I was wondering, I know that you thought a lot of David Miller this year too, and I was wondering how, how did it work out adding him to the staff in that role and adding that position? I mean, um, you know, was there any particular way? I mean, did you, did you want to get him a job? Did, it, did you want that job and then look for him? Or how did that play out? Well, we restructured what we did in, in large part just because, uh, you know, of the, the avalanche of recruiting that goes on on a daily basis and, you know, the number of changes that your roster goes through from one season to the next. You know, David, you know, through what he is allowed to do and not allowed to do per NCAA rules, you know, can really contribute towards our players that are here and also – you know, helping us have a, a great feel for the future. Uh, him, you know, he's got a dynamic personality being from L.A. and Southern California. He has a lot of strong ties and relationships. But uh, just adding someone that has the combination of going to school here, being a part of our staff, growing up in L.A. You know, he's worked at Alabama. He's worked at uh, UC Santa Barbara for Joe. And to be able to get him back here, he knows our system. He knows this campus, and uh, he's got a good feel for how we do things. And I know because, of, like you said, the demands in recruiting and uh, other teams have added similar type positions. Was there any resistance from Dave Heakey or anybody as far as needing to do this? Or? No, no. Uh, that's why we were allowed to do it. They, uh, they supported it. I was wondering, too, just uh, – signing day coming up do you, do you I know it's still there's still some possibilities out there but and, and you it sounds like you're in a different situation this year than you were last year and maybe some more going to happen in the spring but do you expect one two three for the fall at this point you know I'm not I'm not sure I do expect uh, I do expect uh, more than one uh, but you know as I stated in the spring and I, I really, I've looked at this, uh, you know, a thousand times. You know, in essence, you know, we, we really had conversations and added 10 players because we had a number of players that didn't have to return that did. When you mix in, you know, the graduate transfers um, and the transfers that we have, which, you know, you have Stone Gettings, Max Hazard, Jordan Brown, Jamal Baker. You know, those are four that oftentimes aren't, taken into consideration um, that decided to come to Arizona. And then obviously you have the four freshmen, Christian and Zeke, Josh and Nico. Now you're up to eight. And uh, we had Terry Armstrong at one point, and he declared, uh, you know, to go uh, pro in Australia. It's, it's really nine. And then, you know, a number of guys that, you know, didn't have to return. So. We had a lot of activity going on, and with that, you know, you're not going to be as efficient from one to the next. But, you know, at the end of the day, whenever that time comes late in the spring, we'll probably have four or five new faces, and they could come in different forms. But uh, we didn't really expect to, to have a big early signing class, and I, I don't think that will be the case for us. And, it, right, you have that, yeah, and maybe there's a, you know, a situation where there's, 
you guys aren't sure who you're going to have next year, but I'm wondering too, is the lack of clarity as far as the NCAA any issue, at least right now, or even maybe in the spring, does that get better? Because you might know which way it's the wind is blowing. Yeah, I mean, we, we're just uh, doing the best that we can, and like always, really no different than a year ago or two years from now, four years ago, you know, recruiting is, is recruiting. It's, it's very, very difficult. It's challenging. You know, one year doesn't necessarily mirror the next, but the one common theme in the 11 recruiting classes that we've had, uh, we've signed 61 players. So, you know, sometimes we've gotten a big class early, more freshmen. We've had a blend, but 61 in 11 years will pretty much tell you that that's where we'll be when we get to the summer, four or five. Else? Just curious, your thoughts on Aiton's suspension? You know, we were good, great kids can make a single bad decision or decisions. And, uh, you know, sometimes you forget with all the guys that have entered the NBA, it's a younger generation than ever before. Uh, there's a lot of ways to learn a lesson. And uh, DeAndre's not only an incredibly talented kid, but a very smart, smart kid. And I think he'll turn this into a positive. He's with a, with a really good coaching staff and a great support group. And I know they're working with him right now. And he'll return to a better team. And, and I think he'll return with a great mindset whenever that day comes. Thank you. So how was your uh, first game as a Wildcat? I know it was an exhibition, but what was it like, you know, being a competitive game at home? Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad we won, came out with the win. Learned a lot about our team, like Coach said, um, both on offense and defense. But at the end of the day, the goal is to, to come out with the W, and glad that we did that. What did the coaching staff talk to you about your role on the team this year? Um, I mean, it's early. It's crazy we've been here for so long, but haven't really played a real game yet. So, I mean, role definition is something that, that changes and that we figure out throughout the season um, with, with games. So, I mean, they, they tell me, obviously, you know, i am been a shooter. I have the ability to shoot the ball. Um, and on the defensive end, there's still some areas where I can improve, and as well as the offensive end as well. So just learning every day, learning the Arizona way, um, it's, it's a process. What did you think of the atmosphere at McHale, and how did it compare against uh, places you played when you were with Irvine? Mm -hmm. um, the atmosphere was amazing. I knew it was going to be just because my brother had played here, and I'd watched Arizona from afar before. And I played here when I was a freshman as well. So being able to, you know, to be on the other side of it was, was pretty fun and exciting for me. Are you looking forward to having this, this next game that counts, I guess? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, that's why I came here, you know, to play in the games, to play in big environments, you know, for a great coach and a big time program. So it's, it's exciting, man. What do you think will be the biggest adjustment um, from playing in the Big West to the Pac-12? Um, probably just the competition day in and day out. You know, obviously, being in the Big West, we played Pac-12 teams, we played Big East teams and other Power Five conference teams, but that wasn't every day. Um, so just bringing that chip that I had on my shoulder from Irvine here is is going to be big for me. Do you have a preference in you know maybe being a primary ball handler as opposed to playing off the ball? Um, I wouldn't say I have a preference. Um, I it could be game to game. It could be who I'm out there on the floor with. Um, I'm definitely you know really confident in my ability to shoot the ball. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guard at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, I got to have the ability to, to handle the ball and shoot it and, and do all types of things out there. So in practice, you had, like, had opportunities to actually handle the ball? Yeah, I, I have, yeah, for sure. I've been doing a little bit of both. What's that kind of competition been like, especially off the ball, it seems like that maybe mm -hmm. as competitive as anything on this team, you know, with Dylan and Devin Air and Josh, but, you know, what's it been like on a day-to-day -day basis to uh, I think it's been healthy. I think it's made everybody, you know, a little bit better. You know, you got to come in every day and compete. Um, you can't take days off, can't take nights off. So it's made me better. And, uh, you know, just the competition that I have with Josh, Devin Air, Jamal, Dylan, Nico, um, you know, they've made me so much better. And I hope that I've made them better as well. Yeah, I mean, when you find a guy like Dylan or maybe Josh guarding you mm -hmm. that length, I mean, does it change the way you're – or maybe made you a little sharper as far as how you're getting your shot off? Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I got to play my game. I can't worry too much about, you know, who's guarding me um, on different possessions. But 
you know, they've made me so much better. I have to be sharper. I have to be more efficient with my shots and, and taking care of the ball. So, you know, I, I love the competition. Anything else for Max? Uh, how much have you seen um, on NAU? I don't know if you've watched film and what jumps out to you when you look at them. Um, we haven't watched film on NAU yet. We'll get there, you know, here shortly. But I, I don't know too much about NAU yet. Coach says Zeke was one of the team's best defensive players. What have you seen from him that, you know, earns him that title? Um, I mean, Zeke is a beast on, on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, coming from the Big West, you don't see guys that big and that skilled that often. So I was surprised at how good he is. I mean, he still surprises me every day. Um, you know, he's one of our better players, and I can't wait for, you know, all you guys to see that. What about a guy like Christian? He looked good out there um, mm -hmm. in the exhibition and limited action. What do you think about the way he performed? He has a super bright future, man. Christian's really good on both ends of the floor as well, really efficient. And, I mean, he makes everybody so much better in practice every day. And, you know, his, his time's going to come for sure. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Max. Yeah.